Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs? This is the Valiant. It's the Tier 5 British Premium Medium Tank. It's located on the south spawn of Mountain Pass and this one is under the command of Provo Bob. Now you know he's located on the Australian New Zealand server which means that he does come across rather a large number of bots every now and then. And in fact in this game he's not in got bots but reduced numbers as well because there's only 14 either side. Well, I think you can see straight away that he's actually got three marks of excellence on the barrel of his gun. It's 75mm, which is capable of 110 alpha and penetrating 91mm of armour with standard ammo. Now, you could say this is one of his favourite tanks, and that's why he's played so many. It's also probably the worst British tank ever. Mainly because uh, David Fletcher said that it was dreadful. And in fact, uh, he's not the only one who said that. The driver of the tank, the prototype, thought it was pretty awful too. In fact, so bad that he felt that if he had to drive it any longer, he'd actually be injured by the tank because it was so bad. Anyway, it does have very thick armour. It's got 114mm at the front, 75 at the sides and 60 on the rear on the hull and 75 on the turret. Okay, looks like somebody on our team has found the enemy. Now, I'm afraid that Provo Bob's got a happy of firing premium ammunition. And we're trying to wean him off it at the moment. It's really difficult because he's welded to his number two key. At least, I think he's super glued to it at the very least. And in fact, actually, we might have to stop doing any replays for him if he keeps sending us in replays with nothing but premium ammo. And I think the reason for that is that he's not learning anything if he keeps firing nothing but premium rounds. Well, he's just shot his teammate and that means he won't be getting a high caliber, even if he gets the highest damage in the game. And that's a bit of a waste. Because he more than likely will actually end up getting a high caliber, you see. That's the problem. He'll have more damage than anyone else. It's just he won't get the high caliber because he actually struck one of his teammates. He's firing the rounds into that Type 95. He doesn't need to fire premium ammo. He only needs to fire standard ammo. Armor on the Type 95 is dreadful. And he misses out on the kill there because it actually goes to the T67 on his own team. In fact, that was a bot on the enemy team. Fires one quick round into the Matilda 4 and another one into the M8 A1. That's a live player in that M8 A1. You can always tell the live players they haven't got the colons before or after their name. There's another live player there and that's the KV-1. He's just trying to reposition so he can get the gun depression. There's not much gun depression in this tank. It's uh, Again, it's pretty awful. In fact, I say that, but it's actually 12 degrees of gun depression. 12 and a half. He's certainly getting penetrations on that KV-1. Oh, he got a fire! Yep, and looks like he's going to go down as well. There you go, he's got his first kill now. Second kill, sorry. Going for the Matilda 4 now. Those are the ones which were actually sent to Russia uh, by the Arctic Convoy, the Matilda 4. Mind you, the Germans didn't actually put the 75mm in that they claim in, the, uh, in World of Tanks. Because, of course, they put a 75mm instead of the 40mm two-pounder gun. But, in fact, all the uh, they only took one tank and converted it to the Matilda 4 using the 75mm. And it wasn't that successful. So they left them mostly with the 40mm. Now, of course, the 40mm could still penetrate some of the uh, German tanks. They were quite efficient at killing German tanks, the, uh, the the early ones during the war. They weren't so successful later on during the war. In fact, they just ended up bouncing off the side of the, uh, the German Panthers and Tigers. In fact, the, uh, the Germans actually did like British tanks. And Rommel actually had uh, his own number of Cruiser Mark 3s and 4s, I think it was. 
which are actually in his own personal cadre, you might say. Well, he's killed the T-67, so he's now up to four kills. There's the looks, That's, that guy's a bot. One more shot to kill. No, he didn't get it. One more. That's better. Now the Soviet tanks that they had at the time, uh, at the start of the war, they didn't particularly like them, actually. In fact, they they disliked the BT-7 so much that they tried to wreck them by crashing them into German tanks. Uh, because that way they wouldn't have to bring them back, you see. If they brought them back in serviceable condition, the, the Soviet engineers would fix them and send them back out again. And that just meant they had a, the Germans had another chance to kill them. But if they wrecked the tank by driving it into a German tank, then it disabled both vehicles and they get a brand spanking new T T-34. This battle is the capping. They've got three, no, two in the cap, three in the cap now. They don't need to cap. There's still plenty of tanks for us to kill, but they determined that they're going to cap this one out quickly. And it's all going to be over very, very shortly. What a waste. And he just shot his teammate for trouble as well. Here's the end of battle result. And that was an ace tanker game for Provo Bob in the Valiant. In fact, they didn't need to cap out the game. There was three tanks in the cap. But no, absolutely no need to cap at all, simply because they had the game under control. And um, Probo Bob would have been able to finish off those tanks and get an even higher win eight than he did. He got 13,966, but he would have got a much higher one if they'd let him finish off the remaining enemies. He got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five in the end. A master gunner for getting five armor penetrating shots in a row. He also picked up a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points for his own vehicle. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get ten. And as I said, that win eight of 13,966. I think it probably would have been closer to 20,000 by the end of that game if he if he carried on. Anyway, let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see he's definitely the highest damage in the game with 3,042 hit points. He just keeps pumping away, away with that 75mm and it start, starts to pay off in the long run. The second highest damage in the game was the Hetzer, who was still alive at the end of the game. He had 1,062 hit points. The third highest damage in the game was the T-67. Again, he was still alive at the end. He got 1,048 when it came to kills, it was Provo Bob with the highest. He got five kills. Three kills went to the T-67. Two kills went to the Hetzer. And when it came to base XP, it was Provo Bob again. Yes, he's got top in all three columns. 1,590 base experience points. And the second highest was the T-67 with 562. So far behind Provo Bob, it's unbelievable. And 491 went to the Leopard as well. Prover Bob fired 39 rounds in that game, got 31 direct hits on the enemy, 29 penetrations. I'm afraid most of those were premium ammo. 3,000 and I think that's 3,000. My eyes are still letting me go down uh, on times. 3,042 hit points of damage, all of it at close range. Five hits received from the enemy, but only one of them actually penetrated. Four non-penetrations, no hit by splash. 300 hit points damage blocked by armor. One enemy vehicle spotted, seven enemy vehicles damaged from five killed and 127 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 56,487 credits, but he finds so much premium ammo in that game. I'm afraid, yes, he made a big loss uh, considering his uh, tier of 28,638 credits. He got 25 bonds because it uh, was a uh, mission completion. And 2,385 XP, 950 or 9,540 rather I should say for mission completion, 954 for this being a premium vehicle and took away 12,879 experience points altogether. I guess the only reason why Provo Bob continues to play the Valiant the way he does is 
mainly because he might actually enjoy it. He might just get a kick out of blasting away at the enemy. But I think the other thing may be that he's training crews. And the thing is with the, the sort of XP that this thing is generating on a regular basis, he can easily have some of the best crews in the battle or in the field by um, uh, training them up on the Valiant and then putting them into something like uh, a Cromwell or uh, some other British medium tank um, where you can put them to good use. Anyway, um, in the meantime, I'm sure that uh, Provo Bob will come up with another replay that uh, I'll put into uh, onto video. I just wish that he wouldn't put up so many with premium rounds. In, in fact, it would be much better if he was to send me replays where he played nothing but uh, standard ammo. In fact, got rid of all his premium ammo altogether. And let's see if he can actually survive with standard ammo. I think he can. I'm pretty certain that even with a Valiant, even if there's enemy Valiants on the enemy team, he would still be able to take them down using standard ammo just by getting behind them and shooting them in the rear. Well, that's a challenge for Provo Bob. Please do try it. <laughs> You're wasting so much ammunition and so many credits simply by playing the Valiant with premium ammo. So have a go on standard. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And please do remember that we've got a second channel called The General where you can watch great replays but without any commentary whatsoever. Thanks for watching.